Hi all, good morning. I have seen a few requests on the cloud architectures. In fact, there were good comments on my earlier architectural related videos. That is the reason I'm coming up with more uh, architectural related videos. Many people ask me what type of architectures we can usually create in the cloud space. So there is nothing that uh, not eligible for drawing a architecture in the cloud space. I'm, I have come up with a few examples. I will walk you through those examples. Here um, I can say everything what you are coming across in the cloud can be converted into the architecture. Your monitoring alone can be one big architecture because you are actually serving the purposes for the ent entire enterprise. Similarly backup, your backup alone as a strategy can become an architecture and you will have a lot of stuff under that such as pros, cons, evaluation, what are the different possible ways to do a backup and not like one particular service serve everything for your backup services because you may have Azure VMs, you may have uh, maybe the app services, databases, plenty of different databases, right? So for everything you should have some kind of strategy and ultimately you should be able to sustain when there is a disaster with your backup right so similarly load balancer archival devops security under the security again how you will address firewall how you uh, implement a web application firewall nads naps network intrusion detection service and protection service database disaster recovery everything will be eligible for the architecture if you can imagine maybe the enterprise architecture like you know of 10,000, 20,000 uh, uh, employees company, what do they need? So they will have a huge infrastructure, huge pass services and you, you should be able to protect all those or you should create backup, load balancing, archival, what not, everything can be one separate architecture. So I'll take one after one but in today's video I'm going to cover up archival at very high level. Even this particular architecture diagram is not going to serve entire organizational needs of the archival. But I'm just taking one particular instance and going to walk you through. So if you have gone through my earlier videos, I have explained one simple high level architecture. How do you host a website, a database and uh, other services uh, utilization. So you can go through my earlier videos of the architecture, you will be able to correlate what I'm talking about here. So forget about like for time being, forget about the end-to-end -end application architecture, like using the load balancing and all. So everything is being covered. But I'm going to take one particular piece. For example, assume that there is a SQL server or there is a NoSQL database, which can be your MongoDB or Cosmos DB or Cassandra. Now you have to be prepared for the archival of that. In the NoSQL databases, maybe may not be completely relevant, but for the SQL databases, you must need to have some kind of archival strategy uh, because of various reasons, right? So, for example, your data is keep on growing exponentially day by day, week by week. Your database cannot sustain. For example, if you take Azure SQL, I think the, uh, the limitation of the Azure SQL was like 4 TB maximum you can store. Now I think they have come up with 16 TB. Even after 16 TB, you don't have space. And you can't store all the 4 TB or 16 TB within your database. It is going to be a huge performance hit for your database. So I'm just giving the example here. So what, what do you do? How do you come out of this kind of scenario when you have huge data growing up? So that's where we are introducing the archival architecture or a strategy. So moving on, let me just show you, then you will get clarity. So in this particular architecture, I'm not recommending or suggesting any particular feature. Definitely every feature, every resource of the cloud varies based on what scenario or what situation you are facing. So it doesn't match. Everything doesn't match to everything, right? So it depends on your requirement or type of databases you're using or type of strategy you have so it will it keeps on varying i just took one particular example as, assume that you have azure sql database or azure mysql database even all together uh, for your variety of applications 
and also you have azure cosmos db or you know you have one of them even in that case you have one of them and your data is keep growing exponentially in each one of those database the data can be structured semi structured or completely flat right so those type of data data is growing every day in your database and the performance eventually will get hit and then your cpu consumption your memory consumption everything is going to be at the peaks right you will end up paying huge bills if the data is going to be there in your azure sql or cosmos db so if you are storing a terabytes of data in the cosmos or azure sql you will end up seeing the bills even in millions if it is a cosmos if it is a azure sql you will see uh, maybe 30 40k every month right so it depends how exponentially you are growing now what is that i can do i can't hold every piece of the data in the main database right that's where we have to think like where should i dump the data is it really required to store all the data in the primary database or should i have a secondary database where i can simply dump the data still that should be accessible that should be queryable right uh, if i'm just dumping it is not like it is going to be useless it will be there just like that as a back backup copy it's not like that it should be accessible too okay for example if you take a banking application they get huge number of transactions uh, and terabytes of data every year or every month then how do they how do they maintain like say after 3 months or after 6 months they have a schedulers which keep on pumping the data to the maybe warehouse kind of thing sql data warehousing or something so similarly we have to have a mechanism every 3 months uh, the data has to 3 months old data has to be dumped to the other uh, storage okay that other storage you can decide you can evaluate and finally make a call whether it is a adx i used here azure data explorer which is a very recent feature from the microsoft and beautiful resource from the microsoft uh, at the same time you have data lake storage or maybe uh, sql data warehouse there are plenty of features maybe you can simply want to dump into the storage simple storage blob storage type of thing that up to you so in our current case we are trying to dump our data into the adx i'm sorry if i'm using the dump word i i mean to say we are just taking a secondary copy or sec creating a secondary database into the adx but adx use cases are plenty i'm taking one use case for my scenario as a archival but there are plenty of other ways to use adx and uh, it, it is a very beautiful feature let me just give you a little intro about that it is high performance analytics service it is very good for the big data your data is just sitting on the azure sql or cosmos db or mysql just like that but you ha you have to study your data how do you study this sh you should be having some strategy right so you can push all your data to the adx from the adx there are plenty of ways to pass it on to the power bi any ui tools or you can also uh, get that data by using the apis like rest apis tds endpoints and all you can also get by using kql kustos query language kustos query language also is uh, available so that you can easily query from your applications directly so that is the beauty of this like you know if you want to get the data from the adx you can directly query from your applications or you can even process the data to the power bi or you can also use uh, various tools available for the big data so coming to the ingestion part yes they have plenty of ways to ingest the data into the adx it need not to be from the azure sql you can either use azure functions to uh, dump the data into the adx or even you can process the data of raw, raw, raw structured semi structured and unstructured type of data also into the azure data explorer it can process uh, large volumes of data and uh, fast iterations it can also scale up like anything it, it doesn't have such kind of uh, any limitations it can analyze better bytes of data in just seconds so on the cost wise if you are just storing all the data in the cosmos db it will be like huge or in the even azure sql but if it is on the adx it is definitely much much cheaper compared to azure cosmos or azure sql if you are storing the data so plenty of advantages we have in this particular case and there are plenty of other use cases also you can study uh, what are the other use cases of the adx but in in, in this current scenario we are simply making a way to send the data 
like based on your organization requirement or application requirement you can dump every three months uh, or every six months into the adx and adx data is not just ideal or it is uh, it is not only available for your applications to access that archival data the old data it is also available to process the petabytes of data to the to your data science that means you know machine learning what, what to understand the patterns and stuff that will be helpful and it can also publish to the power bi so that's how you can archive the data i'll conclude with uh, one final example in the banking systems for example if you are requesting for one year or older statements uh, that will actually hit the different database or different uh, warehouse mechanism uh, whereas you know if you are requesting for the recent one it will go it will hit the primary database because very less request comes for the older ones uh, so it is better to hold the uh, redirect the request and people also will be able to wait for the older uh, data but for the newer the fresh data people are not enough patient right so that's the reason usually what happens they always maintain uh, just to avoid a kind of performance issues and also to save the cost the same thing we are trying to do here in this particular archival architecture you may ask me just if you sim if i draw a simple diagram is it all over no not at all you have to actually evaluate what are the different options available for your uh, for your case for example here i have taken adx but maybe you can compare with three uh, or four different options so you create a evaluation document you also come up with uh, what are the pros and cons of each and every of those particular uh, features what you are going to uh, adapt at the same time you also need to you need to foresee what issues may come in the future so you have a full-fledged documentation not just an architecture clear explanation on all these aspects then that will fulfill your archival strategy and uh, i have taken only the database here but you can take plenty of other things for archiving right you, you may have some images how do you archive that to some other storage cheaper storage maybe uh, in the within the blob also you have archival storage so there are plenty of other things you can uh, think of and everything is eligible for the architecture within the cloud within the cloud and non-cloud space to be frank thanks for watching my videos